Hi. Hi. We're here. How are you? Good to see you. Good to Good see you, Cindy. Hi. Hi. So glad you're with us. Christy Lee Rogers is with us. Uh, I'm Cindy Malinick. I'm the director and chief curator of the Joel Collins Smith Museum of Fine Art at Auburn University. And this is the third and final uh, virtual series um, that we're presenting associated with our Bernini and the Roman Baroque exhibition that is um, currently installed and closes in just a couple, few weeks, uh, May 31st, May 30th will be the last day. So I hope everyone can come see it. But um, we're so thrilled to have you with us tonight. Christy Lee Rogers is with us and I can't wait to kind of dive into a wonderful conversation um, with you. Um, you're joining us from Nashville, from your home in Nashville. Yes. Um, so not too far up the road from us, no. not too far <laughs> up the road. Um, and so I just wanna introduce you a little bit and then we can, we can kind of dive in. But, um, Christy Lee Rogers is a remarkable artist and um, she works in photography. And um, I was doing some research as I was thinking about um, engagement opportunities around the exhibition and um, came across her work and just was immediately enthralled. And I know everyone on, you know, on this watching us tonight will be as is the world with your followers, your Instagram followers and all of your work. But your work is, um, it has been exhibited around the world. It's um, been, it's held in uh, museums around the world and other institutions. And um, so we're just so honored that you've agreed to spend some time with, uh, with us tonight. And I just can't wait for you to start to tell us all about you and um, thank you. Kind of dig in. We've had some good kind of pre-conversations about about Baroque art and your work. So, um, so welcome and thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you so much for having me and thank you all for being here tonight. Yeah, we have a lot of great stuff to talk about and I'm excited about your show. Oh, thank uh, you. Yes, and all of the works that you have that are going on tour, right, after this? They are. So um, Bernini and the Roman Baroque is a, is a, is a traveling exhibition that um, there are more than 50 pieces that are here, um, all from the um, Kiji Palace in Ariccia, which is just outside of Rome. Wow. And um, we are the first stop on its uh, North American tour. It'll head out to head to Alberta. I um, can't remember. It ends up in Sarasota, Florida, I think. But these pieces have never before been exhibited in, in North America. So, and when I found out that it was traveling, I was so thrilled because um, the university has a study abroad program at, at Oricia. So it's, it's, it's just, you know, it was a perfect kind of um, exhibition to bring here, much less just the idea of having Baroque art, right? Hanging, hanging on the walls. So yeah. well, we, um, why don't we dive in and we're gonna, no pun intended. <laughs> ah, I know. <laughs> really, no pun intended. That would um, be fine. We'll do a little oh, you know, shoot in the background. Good, yeah, we're good. Um, what, I, what we thought we would do is show just a few pieces from the exhibition and then, um, and kind of talk about those just a little bit as kind of a, to lay the groundwork for for everyone to look at your work, Christy Lee. Um, yes. Um, this piece is um, uh, this piece is so remarkable. It's um, entitled Agar and Ishmael and painted in 1670. Wow. It's you know, and when I look at it, I, I immediately think of your work with these reds, right? The red flowing robes in particular. Yes. Yeah, it, it's funny because that that red is almost it's almost got a little bit of an orange uh, hue to it. That really dark orange that just makes makes the whole image. Mm -hmm. you know, without that color, just imagine what the image would be like. So that image just pops right out at you. It's very. I think that's also very baroque. Is these these very powerful colors? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And the other interesting thing about this, and it's this. Um, the story that this is depicting, and I think it comes true in your comes through in your work as well, is 
that this brings together kind of a higher level for your work, but this brings together the the stories really of the three major religions, so or the, some of the the top three uh, religions in in the world. So there's Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all kind of you know embodied in this picture. And so when you think about you know, angels and a baby and the mother and all of that kind of flowing in and out. Um, we see that kind of integration and mixture as well in your work. Yeah, and I it's interesting because I, I think that it's it's this the the human spirit that we're you know we're discussing here and, and what I see in Baroque art and, and in that time is is that you know that's something higher within yourself. Yeah. Um, whatever religion it may be, but right. at the core, it's that. And that's exactly that. And her gaze in particular, right? You know, really does that, doesn't it? Well, right. the next, the next image is um, just glorious. I mean, it, I mean, if you, I, 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 oh, I hope you could get down. I don't know if you can before we close, but this is the summer, and it's one of four pieces. Um, obviously, the four seasons, and right. it is. Huge. It weighs 220 pounds, just so you know. It's a massive piece. But again, like the, you know, the drama of the of the robes and the flowers overflowing, it just um yes. You know. and, and it's so interesting to see this man's reflection in the mirror. Um and that, that, yeah. that's what caught me. That's it. Yeah. And and it's um you know, it's an allegory when you, when you, you know, supposedly when you see your, that, you know, the reflection in the mirror, it, 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 it means love, right? Oh. So you think about summer love. And so there's so much symbolism um, right. in this piece as well. Right. And symbolism, that's very interesting because that, that was, um, I think that was something that was very popular before. I, I, I'm sure it's used a lot now, but it was very powerful before the symbolism of, certain you know certain elements exactly no exactly and this next piece is i mean oh my gosh it's the, you know the drama right the blood and the red again this is the um 1670s sangres christi and this is by bernini um wow. Wow, and, intense yes yeah the red, the red i don't know if it's clouds at the bottom but it looks like red clouds and or you see the blood kind of pouring out. And so there's so much mysticism. I think that's up to, um, you know, the observer to consider. Um, right. But then again, these robes and the sky, how dark it is, but parting. And, um, right. the and you get the same, out. you get the same effect underwater. I can hardly wait to get to your piece. Oh, I know it's, it's funny. You know, that light. There's always that light that's shining through at some point there. That's very interesting to see that. Um, and this last piece, which we'll kind of finish up with and set the scene for yours, this is entitled St. Lucy and um, beautiful. It is gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, look at this sky, the, the brown, the dark, you know, the dark clouds behind her gaze again. Yeah. Wow. And the colors again, the colors are, are just sh shocking and beautiful and, and so simple at the same time. And, and yes, you're right. I agree with all of that. And it, I also, though, see, you know, for example, the blue kind of ribbons or the scarf that she has in her hair, it looks, it does look like it's flowing to me. There's so much movement uh, right, in the right. piece. And this is another one where there's, there's so much allegory because she was, um, St. Lucy was martyred in the fourth century. And, um, you know, there's so many pieces in the show that, we've kind of talked about this a little bit that they're, they're timeless stories. Um, this one, you know, depicts a, a woman that was um, certainly abused and, and part of her abuse before she was martyred, martyred um, supposedly was that her eyes were gouged out. So that's why she's holding that platter, but yet she still has her eyes and she's gazing, um, gazing wow. off into the, you know, into the, atmosphere but um we have another piece Very powerful. that um also depicts the plague and you know we're coming out of covid so right humanity has ever been thus and so 
now we're going to get into your pieces and I just please talk to us about the, the remarkable kind of backstory with with this um, with your work and then also the piece on the left well okay so yeah the piece on the on my right when I'm looking at the screen oh, okay, um, it is um, it's something that I shot actually about a year and a half ago and it was sitting around for a while and then COVID hit in March and uh, my project that I had in Italy was canceled. And so I immediately went into production and started to work on this image and, you know, started to work on all of the images, but this was the first one that sort of came out at me. And I wanted to create an image that was uplifting for that time because I wasn't, uh, I was very concerned about, you know, people being locked down and mainly kids. And so what I did was when I finished this image, we donated it, um, sold it for charity. So there was two kids charities, um, No Kid Hungry and Save the Ch uh, Children. And we sold it online. It was crazy to try to print this during this time. So oh, wow. one of my printers was shut down and we were just trying to, to get these pieces out. A lot of them had to be postponed. So, mm -hmm. you know, people buying it from all over the world. So then that all of the money, all of the proceeds, you know, I didn't even want to take any money from it. So everything went to these two charities. Yeah, sure. But the funny thing is that later on, I did an interview with a, another museum and the woman said, you've got to see this piece painting. And uh, it really reminds me of this work and the Immaculate Conception. So I was a little freaked out when I saw it because I, I, I didn't plan it. I didn't look at it and say, okay, let me create this. But, but it was this feeling of, see, they're down below and she's sort of rising up. So to me, it felt like this rising up triumphant from wherever you are down here. Um, so it's interesting to see them together. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything that was, you know, planned or, and I had never seen actually this image before. So it was, very interesting. The colors, even the the blue and the white. Yes, and it's, it's it's remarkable and haunting. That it's it, very haunting. Yeah, it happened. No wonder you freaked out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this is the closest one I think that I mean, just just her, you know, the um, with the blues and the the white and this, you know, this this sort of looking up, you know, toward the heavens, kind of a feel. Now, of course, with photography, you get to have underwater you get to have all these really vibrant colors you know how deep how deep are these models um that you photographed in this image uh, they're about four and a half to five feet deep mm -hmm. so um so not very deep and that's that's kind of a new style where i'm using a lot of fabrics in the background to paint sort of the paint the background oh so how does that work are they have you just have you dropped those in and they're floating behind yes they're, they're usually down on the bottom and they, they're moving around on their own oh. but the whole idea is that the models are completely flat in the water almost you know like a a painting in a way so so it takes a lot to get that um, that look and to get everything proportionate. No doubt. But I prefer that to shooting all the way in the water mm -hmm. um, because I do get a lot of refraction and I get that softness. So we get this painting like final look. Mm -hmm. And you just mm -hmm. wouldn't get if I was completely underwater. You'd get something. I guess you could, but... This is a way I like to do it because I've got a lot of um, the lighting technique has taken me, you know, 15 years to oh my gosh. Perfect. or more. In this piece, it, and then we'll have to move on. I could look at it all day, but your piece and and your gift and and having it auctioned for feeding the children compared to them, the Immaculate Conception with all of these babies, right, floating up around her. And again, it's just, um, it it's is very haunting. haunting, yes. It is haunting, it is yeah, haunting. In a beautiful way, yes. It is gorgeous. Yes. Well, next up is um, Shine. And I, 
we're just going to weave through all of these and I, I have questions and I want you to say anything that's on your mind, but I, I'm curious about like what they're, what's, what are they holding this? You know, it looks like some sort of plastic and what, what gave you this idea? Well, you know, it's funny, part of this shoot, not the whole shoot, I used a certain kind of material in there that was translucent. Mm. And um, I didn't end up using a lot of it, but for this image, it felt like it needed some something more to give it a little bit of accent in there. So, um, so it, you know, sorry. No, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay, no. So, so yeah, that kind of made it into here into this piece, but it wasn't. Uh, I mean, I say the fabrics are, um, you know, they're just sort of paint. You know, they're the paint that I use is all the different colors in the fabric. So this was something new that, and I started to work again with this kind of a fabric in the apple shoot that I did. Mm. Um, it can be very magical underwater. You've got to be able to shoot it correctly, but um, but it gives it a little bit of otherworldly feel. It does, right. And the red, the there's some of that pops of red and orange. Yes, I, I love the the reds and the the blues and the browns and the blacks. Those are my mm -hmm. my favorite colors for sure. And tell tell me and everyone how you you mentioned you've been doing this for fifteen years. But what? How did you even start? What gave you the the idea to even photograph this way? And you your camera is out of the water. Well. My camera is out yeah. of the water. I, it did start out in the water. I've done everything, but mm -hmm. uh, it might might have been maybe 20 years ago that I accidentally shot in the water um, just because I love the water. And so I decided to do a shoot in the water and I, I noticed how magical the images were mm -hmm. that I actually didn't really get what I thought I was going to get, but I got something different. So I started to experiment with it and really push it and you know it's funny because i became obsessed at that moment <laughs> only because i felt like i could paint with my camera because oh, i had been, gosh i had been photographing you know since i was you know 15 years old but i was photographing reality and mm. you know, and i wasn't very interested i must say i i took a lot of photos i'd print them and then i most of my negatives, I don't even own them anymore. I, I that's just how bad I was. I didn't <laughs> own them very much. Oh my gosh. Oh it's my terrible. God. I know, I know. I I mean I'm kicking myself now, but I yeah. but when I started to do shoots underwater, I became really obsessed. So I started to just ask everybody to go in the water. My mom, my dad, oh. I could find, and I started to sculpt a style. And I made a lot of mistakes. I mean, I would say for seven years I was making mistakes <laughs> before I, you know, before I really decided, okay, this this shot is good enough to release. And and that was my siren collection that I released. And then I just started, I just continued experimenting and and you know, mm -hmm. this is shot in Hawaii. Um that's where I'm from. So I usually go back to Hawaii and shoot or I'll shoot in Nashville. But um, this is a very murky pool. The water was getting very dirty. And so it started to get soft. So it's a little different than my other images. But I, I sort of just went with it, which is usually what I do is any kind of mistake is a, it's a good thing for me. Yeah. I Yeah. No. Yeah. Nothing is a mistake, actually. <laughs> it right. Seem like right. And it, um, I love hearing you use some words, use the word magical and sculpt yes. and, and paint, right? You, those are not necessarily uh, verbs anyway that you would associate with photography. I, I wouldn't anyway, but they, they absolutely, you, you sculpt and paint with your camera to be sure. This one's yeah, really I, I try not to pigeonhole myself as a photographer. I just think of myself really as an artist. I'm just creating images that people yeah. can feel. And I'm, those are my tools. But I do feel like with light and the fabrics and the bodies, you're sculpting, you're sculpting mm -hmm. these emotions. And how long are, the, are your subjects underwater? 
You know, I would say that between 30 seconds and a minute is about as long as we'll get on one take. So oh, we my, it's so short. That's so fast. It's so short. I know. It really is. And we're, we're going to be working on that mm -hmm. and getting longer. But you've got to really practice a certain kind of uh, breathing technique. Mm -hmm. um, and you, um, I think you mentioned that you have even shot yourself as a you were a model early on is that right yes all of the first tests well not all of them but a lot of them were on myself so i would set up the camera and then have my friend shoot exactly the way i wanted and then get out change look at the images change the camera okay try it again so i know exactly how it is to be underwater and i think that's really good because i i understand how difficult it is it's very very difficult and yeah. You know, you work for hours to really perfect hopeful because that's oh the flash, yes, of course, flash shell right. That's in the the other image, and that was eventually how I created it was with that fabric. Okay, so <laughs> and for it to even retain the pleats underwater, it's just right, right. And it also looks like the the model or the subject on the on, Lisa on my as I'm looking at on the right. It's got on almost like a bodysuit or something as well. It looks like brocade. It could almost be like brocade. Yes, yes. I have that bodysuit here in my studio. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like um, different elements. You know, sometimes I just throw in some. There's uh, one collection where it's very, um, I guess, broke, but then you've got a clown in it. Really? <laughs> you know, I threw in a clown outfit. And so I like adding these little elements that are, you know, Take like there's one where you know he's got a tattoo on him, the, the man. Um, how did you um how did you come up with this? This one's entitled, is this reckoning paradise? Yes, yes. How did well, tell me about that title? Oh gosh, yeah. All of the titles are very special to me. I I keep them in notebooks and really um, you know, this was about this time, this last year during um, COVID and the lockdowns. And, um, you know, I didn't want to get too dark during this time. I felt like I, I could have gone down that road. I wanted to keep it very light and very hopeful because I felt like that's what people needed. So right. that's what this image is, is, is this, this sort of dance, but you can also feel an intensity in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's a lot going on. It's very chaotic in a way. Um, but it's also very, peaceful and there's this it's like the kind of traveling you know i feel like the traveling somewhere mm -hmm. right the going somewhere so that that's the reckoning paradise mm -hmm. um i feel like we all we're all you know looking for our own freedom in certain ways right. and so that's that's message i put in a lot of my work and so that's what you're feeling here is you know it's a it's a path that we're all on in some way, and maybe some are more aware of it than others or right. looking for it, but that's that's sort of the journey of these images. And we, we talked, um, when we were prepping for this last week, we talked about, you know, how important art and artists, I mean, always are, but certainly in times of stress, how how the work, the creativity captures so much. Um, it reflects what, you know, it reflects not only what you're feeling, but perhaps what society is going through. And that um, it's so layered and so complex. So you said so many things and just kind of your feelings about this piece. There's, you know, there's an intensity, but there's a, there's hope, but there's you know, a path and there's, you know, seeking. And so it's, um, it's just so layered and, and filled with um, so much humanity, so much humanity. It's right. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's what I wanted this whole collection to be about is. Um, it, what is this? So this is all in one. This is one what we're looking at right now. These have all been in one collection. Um, yes. These are all the new collection called Human. Human. Right. Yes. And um, yeah, again, same same feeling on this one. Um, you know, it's funny because I'm actually very inspired by 
by space and um, um, just the universe in general and the, the, the laws of the universe, I guess, that we've agreed with like gravity and um, this attractive force. So I think that I use that a lot in my work as well. And it's, it compares a lot to water, that feeling of being underwater and being in space, you know, having no gravity. Yeah. So that, and that again is a freedom, you know? So, yeah. so they all kind of tie in. And I mean, this could be in space. This could be anywhere. This, you know, you're it definitely right. Doesn't you're look right. Like and I, it's so interesting because I've been just so kind of, um, Prejudice isn't the right word, but because I I know that this is these are photographs taken with uh, underwater, it's, it's depicting um, people underwater, and I hadn't thought about it in space until just this minute. And then of course you think about like the astronauts floating in the the space capsules in their hair and everything is floating, right. and it could absolutely be that. Right, right, and that that to me feels like the ultimate freedom. I'm also the girl in the middle. Um, she oh. has, you can't really see her face, oh, you know no. what that is, but to me that looks very, like she's got some kind of helmet or something on. So it's very subtle, but, but also cocooned almost. Right, right, exactly. And this one is entitled Natural Wonders. Yes. Oh my, these are so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, reds. Yeah. I mean, the reds, whites, and blues, boy, that it just, and the black, oh, just blew me away on this piece. I, um, yeah. And this is entitled Liberation. Is that right? And it, it, yes. it is that. It is absolutely, it is absolutely that. Yeah. That's what I was feeling. I mean, this was created, boy, I would say, you know, the end of last year, maybe October. Or so and I was just feeling that need for liberation, yeah. you know, for something to change. Just uh, when we're really heading into a really, really terrible time. But these teals yeah. in this one in particular, my gosh. Yeah. So is yeah. this three? Those are three models. Is that only is it just three that I'm yeah. seeing? I think so. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just three. And do you so here's this pleated fabric again. So when, when they come out of the water, do you lay the fabric out to dry and use it again? How does that work? Uh, yeah, actually, it's usually hundreds of fabrics. So we, um, we hang them. Uh, the, the house that I would shoot at here, we had a huge um, outside deck. So we everything would get hung and just drip dry for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then usually dry in the sun, but we're talking hundreds of fabrics um, underwater. So it's a, it's a lot of work to get them in and out of the pool. Yeah. My God. And, yep, and then they get, you know, they get folded up and used again. Some of them washed, you know, I've got to definitely make sure that we don't put any fabrics in there that um, are not washed already. Um, mm -hmm. Or if they've been in the chlorine, that's fine. But if you're going into a saline pool versus mm -hmm. chlorine, that changes things. Um, but the water is very sensitive. So, you know, I did buy these materials. Uh, it was sort of this macrame kind of a thing. And it it came and it smelled like chemicals. Mm. And I was horrified. So I washed it a few times and it was, and it just, you know, I, I'm very careful not to put anything in the water that, mm -hmm. that can change or taint the water. So, so you didn't end up using that fabric? I did, but I had to soak it in my bathtub for days. So oh my gosh. I had to really wash it very well. And where do you find your fabrics? Everywhere. Um, um, fabric stores, thrift shops, mm -hmm. um, sheets. I mean, when I first started out, I would just grab, you know, sheets from the closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, go to the, you know, go to the thrift shop or pick up, there's a lot of fabrics there. So uh, nowadays I can't really find them as well, but uh, mm. I buy them online. I'm posting, I mean, sorry, I'm, um, I'm buying a lot of fabrics online these days. And I'm actually mostly having some of these fabrics kind of put together for me, like some of the costumes are 
full of fabrics. Mm. Oh yeah, this is from my last collection called Muses. Muses. Yes. And what is this? So it looks almost like there's a flower or something, a white flower. Uh, it, or maybe it's just a re light reflection. Um, the person with the orange. Oh, oh, you mean in front of her face or? Uh-huh. Oh, those are actually bubbles. Oh, those are bubbles. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because a lot of times I like to keep it raw. And I, I, I mean, I'm not sure if every, anybody would say, hey, we should put this image with the bubbles here. But I felt like it was very real. Mm. I, and you don't know what it is. See, that's interesting that you think it's a flower or could be anything. Yeah, I thought it might be a flower or something kind of affixed in their hair. Right, right. So that, and that it worked on this one. It doesn't always work, but there was something about it that worked for me. So, and the light, this one really kind of, you know, you're, it looks like ever they're drawn up to the light. It looks like they're yeah. way deep underwater and I know they're not, but it looks yeah. like it. Yeah. That light is really, really critical. Um, it kind of creates the whole image for me. So that that's kind of my standard lighting that you're seeing. And so in addition to fabric, do you have other props that you, that you use? You know, I have tried a lot of props in the past and it's funny that I always end up coming back to the fabrics. Um, the props can go wrong. Oh. Yeah, they, they can go a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, it's a fine line making them, making them look great. I think it's just about getting the right props. Um, I would love to, I have a friend of mine that has a horse and she was, you know, showing me some photos of her in the water with the horse. And I said, oh my goodness. Oh my. That could be very interesting. Um, yes. But having real, real things is much better, you know, because I've, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yes, but I always end up just going back to fabrics. Well, I can see easily why, because it's, um, the real would be best because there's, life in in those things but then the fabric because there is so much movement in it as opposed to someone um you know just holding a cane or something you know it's right. not going to move it's not going to move in the water which is right, you're right. capturing well and, and and i did use um in some of this collection there are some props um mm -hmm. i actually i got props for the nine muses so each muse has a certain um you know, symbol that they, yes. certain yeah. element that they use. So there are some where she's writing on a tablet and she's got, you know, mm -hmm. so there definitely are a few props, but very little, very little. I love the nine muses. Several of them are related to poetry, best I recall, writing and poetry. Can't yes. All of, them. yes. all of the arts, you know, and yes. yes. And this, I, I and mean, one of my favorite colors is chartreuse. So I see all these, greens and yellows yes. in here is beautiful and this one's entitled creation yes 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 yeah this just felt full of life and and creation like it's all about creation and it felt very playful it, you know what it reminds me yeah but when i thought of the word when i think of creation i think of the scene in the sistine chapel where adam is you know touching his <laughs> yeah yeah it kind of looks like that too even the horizontalness of it Yes, yes. No, it, it definitely had this life to it and this playful uh, vivacity that I just, I don't know, the colors, maybe it's the colors as well. Um, yeah, I don't know how many students we have watching, but I hope you'll share, um, since, you know, we're an academic museum, I hope you'll share kind of your your um, your tips, your process, and, and you know your growth as an artist as we're talking yes. through these as well. This is just remarkable. This one, oh my gosh, Thank evolution. You. Evolution is the name evolution, of this. Evolution, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, this is um, you know, and it's funny because it is an evolution as an artist. You, you know, if you were to see some of my first images, they were very simple, one body one color fabric um that was the siren collection and then now 
I start layering in all of these different elements um, and costumes and fabrics and lights and lots of bodies. So I would say, you know, when you starting out, you start out simple and, and then you kind of build, you know, you keep building on top of that and keep adding. And sometimes you take away because I, sometimes I could go too far and say, well, you know what, that's not working. Mm. So um, there's a certain balance. And this I notice, and, and maybe I haven't noticed in other ones, but is this a, a male figure? Um, and I haven't seen as many male figures, I don't think. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is a, this is, yeah, this is a guy with the tattoos. Oh, okay. a tattoo on his oh leg. I see on his leg. Oh, I see. Yeah. There's another one where you can see more of them, but um, he's a guy that I met in Hawaii. And um, this, yeah, this was all shot in Hawaii. And he was amazing. He's a, you know, he's a surfer mm -hmm. and local guy. Um, and yeah, we shot this in a pool um, a little bit outside of Honolulu. And yeah, I mean, it was an indoor pool. So it was really nice because we, uh, we didn't have all the elements like we usually do. And sometimes it rains, it's mm -hmm. windy, it gets cold. And um, yeah, I really liked working with him. And I, I do shoot, I have shot a lot of men in some of my older collections, but I, I kind of go back and forth. The, the human collection is a lot of women in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was wondering if the pools were heated or not. <laughs> in Hawaii, they're not heated. So you just, you deal with, it, it gets cold. Um, and the one in Nashville was, was heated. I think um, we had it one time that it wasn't heated and then we, we brought in a heater to heat it up. So mm -hmm. Yeah, really. It makes it easier. And um, Christy Lee, you mentioned a little earlier that you had done a, 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 a I don't know if it was a series, but you had done, a, you were commissioned by Apple, I think, to do some work. And can you tell us, I don't know if that's related to this image or not, but I'm sure everyone would love to hear about that too. Yeah, the Apple shoot was, um, when was that? The end of 2019. So and COVID. That, <laughs> yeah, before, right before. And the, they let me choose the creative on it. So I chose to do my style. But what I did is I focused on a space renaissance. So that's what I called it. A space. Mm. So um, these are more Baroque. The, the, the images for Apple are more... There's still that Baroque quality, but they're more um, fantasy-like. Ah, um, that's good for Apple, right? Because that's so so that so Apple. Apple. <laughs> so yeah, Apple. yeah, no, and, and I love that. I mean, I wanted to get into that as well. So it, it's that's why I called it Space Renaissance because it's got a mix of both, um, and that was that was a lot of fun. Mm. We shot that here in Nashville as well. Oh, good. Good. So you could stay home and do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, this yeah. piece is, okay. now I see the bubbles for sure in this one. This is glorious. Yeah. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of the, the you know, the artifacts in there too. So um, yellows. Yeah. For some reason on the Muses collection, I was also drawn to this yellow mm. feeling that you have in a lot of the old um maybe more renaissance pieces mm -hmm. you know those deep yellows and and she just she just looks released this center <laughs> i mean just like thrilled and just you know ready to yeah. yes ready to bu burst forth and yes I, and i i'm forward. not sure if that's the whole image that you're seeing there it might just be a crop of it oh okay but yeah, she's she was amazing. And I also see a little bit of pattern or something. I don't know if that's lace or what that is. Um, kind of cut, cut out. In the oh, on the bottom right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I did have some pattern fabrics that I um, I have a lot of crazy patterns. So so it did make it in there. One of these pieces, and it just gives it a little little something different you'll see it in a couple other images mm -hmm. and so even for like this one did you how many times 
or was did you get it did you get this on the very first time when they went down or how long oh, no. You, no. <laughs> oh, no 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 <laughs> we worked for this might have been the second day that we oh my oh yeah because we are you know we might practice for hours mm, practice, I'm, shooting. Yeah. I'm shooting the whole time so i'm always shooting them but i know that the first images are going to be you know the hardest ones and then mm -hmm. We work it. We just we just push it and push it and push it. And I think at some point, you know, during the beginning, it seems like I'm not going to get the image, you know. And wow. and I know, see, I know my process already. So I just keep pushing through. Okay, let's try this. Okay, move that. Okay, let's change these fabrics. And we're these fabrics. I'm always moving them. So okay, let we need some red. Okay, some put some yellow. That's why I say it's kind of like painting. Oh, got it. Yeah, okay. my look and say we need blue. We need some purple in here. And so. We're adding colors and then we're, I'm perfecting her performance and all of them together. And then, you know, I think after, you know, maybe three hours, we, we really start getting hot. Mm. <laughs> and usually toward the end when everybody's exhausted, that's when it's, we're, you know, it's perfect. When it comes together. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever use, um, music? Can they, cause you can hear music under, well, I just was wondering. Oh, yeah. Oh, you do. Oh, yeah. On um, on the the human collection, we had Hans Zimmer playing the whole time. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> kidding! Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. It was it was epic. It, it just adds to the whole. You oh know. yeah. 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 So this is Muses, and um, just so beautiful. I just thought we'd linger on it one more minute. <laughs> I could just this look. is actually on a ceiling. We did a huge ceiling um, installation in California. So imagine the whole ceiling is just covered with her. Oh my you know. gosh, I can't. What a wonderful idea to be able to look <laughs> up at that every day, every night. Yeah, and it's actually in 3D. So you have to wear 3D glasses. Oh my, that, oh, I just keep saying that. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> Well, we've got a couple now that are, um, they're very, very short little, vi they're videos, but they're, um, they've been posted on your Instagram account. So maybe yes. we could, and there's a little bit of sound, but I hope we've got that up loud enough so that folks could hear that next. Oh, yes. And these are just little um, breathing videos, what I call them. And it's, they're experiments. Right now, they're still experimental, but I've been posting them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you mean by experimental. I mean, you're just, just kind of seeing what you like, don't like about them. and Yeah, well, because I, I do have other plans for them. Um, I definitely want to make them uh, better. So right now, I'm testing it out with some of the footage that I have. And I can't really say exactly what I'm working on. It's sort of top secret, but I okay. have some plans. <laughs> oh, no. Your secret's safe with all of the, the people. <laughs> but it has to do with motion, for sure. I'm, I'm really drawn to motion now. I, I love the still images, but I, I feel like it's oh, the mute moving image. And sorry, these are a little low quality, so they're, they're skipping a little, but oh, no. it's get the idea. Can you imagine if a Baroque artist could be transported, you know, four centuries? <laughs> See this? I, I know. Wouldn't it be something? I mean, because they they were doing the same thing. They were capturing, trying to capture movement and light and color and drama. Uh, yes. Never being able to imagine what oh, you, moving. you do. I know, I know, moving image. Now I just have to perfect it because, boy, that would be something to just keep that forever and be able to, um, I don't know, you experience it differently when it's a moving image. You do, but at the same time, I think, um, <clears throat> because we're so used to seeing moving images, right, and we're so used to seeing everything in color, Right. But sometimes I'm taken aback by um, when I see an old black and white still photograph. You know, it just, um, it, 
it, it in a way they it has its own um, its own depth. You right. know, it captures things in a way that sometimes the the color and the movement you might lose the some sort of detail or something. So right. we're lucky to have have it all in our lifetime. I think. I know we we really do, and there's so much to explore. I mean, really, uh, there's a lot holograms. <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's um, museums have been um, experimenting with those for some time now as well. Um, There's a lot. Yeah, the moving image is so exciting. And, and underwater, you can do so much. It's, it's mm -hmm. magical. So, Tell everyone a little bit about um, there was a piece that we were talking about that, um, you know, to kind of get back to COVID and thank goodness there's a vaccine and you know, it seems like we're starting, at least this country is starting to come out of it. But um, there's at least, there's a piece at Mount Sinai, at Mount Sinai is that right? That you, yes. that you, yes. that you put there. Yeah. I, um, there were two pieces that I donated to Mount Sinai in, right in the center of New York. Um, one piece actually before COVID. Mm. And so it was up during the whole time. And um basically the ICU unit there became yeah ground zero it was yeah ground zero for covid mm -hmm. people were doing something else and they shut down and just completely became a covid um center and so um the director wrote to me saying oh i can't i can't tell you how inspiring people were looking at your art because it's right in the hallway you know and they're walking down this hallway the whole time and families are coming through so so then there was another image that's called riders of the light and we didn't get to look at it, but it's sort of these angelic mm. girls coming, you know, floating down, kind of looking on, down on humanity. So I imagine the piece being high, position high. But so I ended up donating that piece to them. I'm actually not sure. I think it went into the to the main reception area. But, you know, it was just a way to to uplift you know, people during this time and, right. and, you know, a lot of things shut down for me. So I wasn't doing shows and I didn't get to do the shoot. So I, I started donating. I donated a lot of artwork last year, a lot. You're so and wonderful. That's I just said, yes. You know, they asked me, I say, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. It's, there's so much to think about with what we've all been through, but one thing to be sure is, if you've got kind of any sense of self is, you know, the kind of the clarity of what's important. Right. 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 What's important, really important in life. And it's kind of easy to boil that down now, but um, to your point of like someone asked and you just said, yes, I mean, yeah. of course you did. Yeah. I mean, I think that as an artist, it's hard because, you know, what we were doing was being shut down. We couldn't, we couldn't get out there to the world. And luckily we had on online, but it, it's a way to be causative. So for me, it was a way to do something about it because otherwise I felt like I was the effect of it. So I said, well, I'm going to do something. And it it's funny, the more I did, the more it made me feel better about the situation because I was like, okay, surprise me. let's raise money. Let's do this. Let's, you know. And it's interesting because I feel like this last year, people have been looking to art for that inspiration. I'll, I mean, big time, big time. I, I've never seen so many people, I mean, so many people contact me, let's do this uh, interview, let's do this, let's do that. They want to find a way to, to do at something. A, at a time when artists, as you said, were shut down. If you're a performing artist, there was no, there were no venues. Right. You know, so you were, again, for, if museums were shut down. We all, you know, we were talking to in a meeting this week about, you know, we're kind of sick of the words like pivot and, you know, because <laughs> you we had to, we had to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, well, it was, no, and it's good. I mean, we all did. And, and I think that's, what's great. It's being able to adapt, you know, that's, it's evolution. It's you just we have to adapt. That's and, exactly right. That's exactly and, right. And luckily, we have these kind of places online because yeah, we've done everything online, and it's, it's been nice. You know, what I love about it. It's been so good for us um, as an institution, and I think good for the field because I'm a big believer in not everybody comes to a museum. 
Right. Not, not every, everyone does, either doesn't have access or they may not feel comfortable. It may not have been, you know, how they were raised. But um, this is a way to really open up access, become more, um, you know, be able to connect with people in a way, a, a, a wider, broader audience. Right, right. And I, I think that's what, you know, in the Baroque time, that's what it was about because you would go into the church and you would see the art and you would walk down the streets and see Bernini's angel. Exactly. Now, and there's something about that that's very powerful. I would like to get into that too, where it's it's there for humanity. It's for everybody, you know? And, and, and I think this is a good way to help bring it out to people. It's like, you know, virtual tours of the museum because the work that you have is incredible. I mean, it's, it's just fa like fascinating and beautiful and, um, and that you have it there. You know what I mean? I mean, these are, I mean, truly it's, I, I think I've told so many people, I, you know, it, it may sound sac like sacrilege, but I, I hadn't really thought about Baroque art since I was 18 in my intro to art history class, you know, I was like, yes, it's coming. And then I walk into the gallery and it's like, oh my gosh, there's Baroque art hanging on the walls. It's, it's powerful. It, it is powerful. It is yeah. powerful. And at the same time, um, Artists have to make a living. And so there's, you know, how does how does all of that work? There's this whole economy as well that um, is so important to remember and, and honor as well. Right, right. Well, I think if you do what you love and you do it well, then the money sort of comes to you, you know? I, I always believe that. And that's what I would tell, you know, your students and artists is never, never um, sacrifice your own vision do what's true for you. It always works out in the end. Yeah. I had so many people tell me when I first started, you know, you should go get a job and this is not going to work. And I, I was very stubborn, you know, I mean, I cried a lot and it was tough. I was the starving artist, but I was very determined because it was, it was just what I loved. I, I, it's, I knew who are, it's obviously who you are. Who the, I am. Right. And so yeah, I couldn't do anything else. So you've got to just stick with it and push through if you believe in your art. Which Something else really to think about, isn't it? That, um, you know, there's so much happening in the world, but this, you know, this notion, especially around higher education and the importance of, um, you know, or the, the emphasis on obtaining a degree where you can get a job. Right. And, right. You know, there's so there's been a de-emphasis on the humanities and the liberal arts as we think about tech and business and all these things. But of course, it all makes the world go around. But without the humanities, where is the human part, right? Where where yeah. is that? And so to encourage to lose that is frightening to me. And it's one of the things that I think is so important about you know, your craft and what a museum does, it, it does offer people a window into something else. Yes, absolutely. And it's important. I mean, I, I grew up in Hawaii where we didn't have a lot of museums, but I must say that I cherished going to Europe because there's museums on every corner and architecture in the streets. And I mean, I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. But you had in Hawaii... The natural the beauty as well. And yeah, that's that fragility as well, right? That yeah, is so I precious. I did, yeah. So. That, that was what I had. So I used that. But but yeah, I mean, art is so important. And, and that's what I would say also to uh, any students that are watching is that, you know, you have a job to do to help. You know, it's like art is very important. Music, architecture, yeah. interior design, um, all of these things. Um, they they make the world beautiful. And I don't know what I would do without all of those things. So please make them. <laughs> no, no one would know what to do. It's so much as, I mean, even like to kind of get back to Apple, to think about even the beauty of that design, right? Yeah. Whether it's the phone or the Mac or whatever, that's, it, it's in everything. It's in the fork that you pick up. It's, it's right. you know, the, even, you know, the background that we have right now, it is, it's, it's yeah. it's so much creativity um, behind it and yes. reason to get up in the morning. <laughs> I know, I 
in addition to our children and our families and all of those good things. Yes, yes. Well, we we just have a couple of more minutes. Um, we've had one a question come in um, asking about the kind of cameras that you use. Oh yeah, okay. So I prefer to work with a Canon 5D Mark III. That's my mm. that's been my go-to camera for a little while. I have shot with everything, um, Sony, Nikon. Um, I have a Fuji camera now, so I'm going to be testing with that. And it's a, it's a hundred megapixel camera. So it will go billboard size Whoa. at very good quality. Um, cause I would like these to be very, very big. I think that's the way I envision them. Um, they need to be seen big. I think <laughs> I, I do. I do. I agree with you. I think they do. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, those are my go-to cameras and, um, Canon, I love the, the Canon for the color space. It's got a really warm colors. The Nikon is a little different color space, um, but I, I do like them all. Um, and yeah, I mean, Fuji is interesting. I've never shot with Fuji before, um, but I would say whatever camera you use, just make sure it's really high quality. I wouldn't even mess around with a low quality camera uh, it's not worth it if you're going to go out and shoot something amazing. You you want to just start off at the top. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did when I started shooting is I, I rented the best camera I could get because oh, I couldn't buy it. Good. Oh, that's a good I idea. It. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. And is, I've, I've been I've been wanting to ask, are your um, are your parents talented or your other people in your family? You know, where, where did the DNA come from? <laughs> Well, they're they're all artists for sure. My parents are musicians. Um, oh my, of course. Yeah, they're my dad's very creative. Both my mom and dad mm -hmm. are very creative, so I definitely got that from them. Um, and I, you know, I played piano when I was younger, and mm -hmm. I have a piano here, and I on my guitars, and yeah. You know, so we're we're all love all the different arts for sure. My dad's a writer as well, and and um, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, we're almost at the end of our time. Yes. Um, I don't want it to be over, but I oh. love this so much. And I um, I hope that we can work together. We're not that far yes. apart. Wouldn't it be wonderful to do an exhibition or a kind yeah. of anything that you want to think about? We would love to um, stay in touch. And yes. um, just thank you so much for this. It's just been the hour has flown by. It's flown I know, by. I know. I know we can just keep talking. I want to talk more about Baroque. <laughs> well, come down. Come down. Yeah, come down. And come see me and we'll look we'll look at it together. Okay, Cindy. Thank you so much. That, that sounds like fun. I'm gonna take you up on that. I would love it. I would love it. It's just been our honor and pleasure to have you this evening. And I wish you all the best and can't wait to con just continue following how wonderful your thank career you, is. Cindy. Is evolving and opening thank up. <laughs> thank you so much, and and, it's been and fun. Good. Have a wonderful night, and thank you all for being here too, as well. Very good. Thank okay. you, and good night to everyone. Okay. Bye, Cindy. Bye. 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 Bye.